Good afternoon. This is Akashwani and I'm Punita Bakshi with the Midday News. The headlines. Over 32.18% voting recorded till 1 p.m. for single phase assembly elections in Maharashtra. Peaceful polling also underway in second phase of Jharkhand assembly elections. Over 47.92% voting recorded till 1 p.m. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reaches Guyana to hold talks with President Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali at Georgetown this evening. Guyana announces to confer its highest national award, the Order of Excellence on Prime Minister Modi. 55th edition of International Film Festival of India to begin in Goa today. In badminton, ace Indian shuttler PV Sindhu storms into pre-quarter finals of China Masters 2024 tournament in Shenzhen, China. And in hockey, India to clash with China in final of Women's Asian Champions Trophy in Bihar this evening. Voting is underway for the second phase of assembly elections in Jharkhand and single phase polling in Maharashtra amid tight security. According to Election Commission, 47.92% voting took place in Jharkhand till 1 p.m. Voting is being held in 38 constituencies in 12 districts in the state. Polling began at 7 a.m. and will conclude at 5 p.m. while in Nakshal infested 31 booths polling will be held up to 4 p.m. due to security reasons. 528 candidates are in the fray in this phase. We now go over to our Jharkhand correspondent Bhupendra Singh. Bhupendra, how is the voting process progressing in the Jharkhand assembly elections? Yes, yeah, Punita, the second and final phase of polling is progressing smoothly and peacefully in the Jharkhand. If you look at the voter per turnout percentage, till 1 p.m., 47.92% voting has been recorded in the 12th district. Maximum 53.83% voting turnout has registered in Pakur district, followed by Jamtara, 52.21%. The lowest turnout, 42.52%, has been recorded in Bokaro. Right now, I am in Ramgarh constituency. Thank you Bhupendra. In Maharashtra 32.18% voting took place till 1 p.m. according to Election Commission's data. Elections for all 288 seats are being held in a single phase in the state. Voting began at 7 a.m. and will conclude at 6 p.m. Let's go over live to our correspondent Samarjit Thakur. Samarjit, how is the response of voters? We regret that we are unable to make contact with our live correspondent. Moving on. By-elections are also being held for parliamentary constituency of Nanded in Maharashtra and 15 assembly seats spread over four states. Let's go over live to our correspondent from Punjab. Yes, Punita, the contest is triangular in Gadarbaha. Uh, this is a constituency in Muksar district. Uh, the former finance minister mantri singh badal uh, he is contesting on bjp's ticket against uh, hardeep singh dimpi dhillo of aam aadmi party and congress uh, amrita wading they are pitted against each other whereas the uh, bjp's ravi karan singh kahlo jitender kaur of congress and uh, gurdeep singh randhawa of aam aadmi party are in fray from uh, dera baba nanak and again uh, aap's uh, ishan kumar chabewal from chabewal constituency in hoshiarpur is pitted against uh, congress uh, uh, ranjit kumar and bjp's uh, son singh thandal punita and uh, what are the security arrangements we regret that we are unable to make contact with our correspondent again moving on Prime Minister Narendra Modi will hold talks with President of Guyana Dr Mohammad Irfan Ali at Georgetown this evening. Several agreements are expected to be signed following the talks. Mr Modi reached Guyana this morning on a 3-day visit to the country. In an unprecedented gesture, he was received at the airport by President Dr Mohammad Irfan Ali, Prime Minister Mark Anthony Phillips and over a dozen cabinet ministers. He was also accorded a ceremonial welcome. A report
This is the first visit by an Indian Prime Minister to Guyana in 56 years. Mr. Modi will participate in the second CARICOM India Summit today and hold meetings with leaders of CARICOM member countries to further enhance India's long-standing friendship with the region. Tomorrow, the Prime Minister will address the Parliament of Guyana. He is also scheduled to address a gathering of the Indian diaspora. Mr. Modi will also interact with cricketers of Guyana and the Caribbean region. India has a long-standing developmental partnership with Guyana in the fields of health, connectivity, renewable power and water. With Divakar, Anpamish, Akashwani News, Delhi. During the visit, Guyana will confer its highest national award, the Order of Excellence, on Prime Minister Modi. Barbados will also confer the prestigious Honorary Order of Freedom of Barbados on the Prime Minister. A few days back, Dominica had also announced its nas- national award, Dominica Award of Honor, to Mr. Modi. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has embarked on a three-day visit to Laos to attend the ASEAN Defence Minister's Meeting Plus, ADMM Plus. During the meeting, he will also address the forum on regional and international security issues. The ADMM is the highest defence consultative and cooperative mechanism in ASEAN. The ADMM Plus is a platform for ASEAN member states of Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam and its eight dialogue partners including India, the US, China, Russia, Japan and South Korea. The countdown has begun for the grand opening of the 55th edition of the International Film Festival of India, IFFI. A star-studded ceremony will begin at 5 p.m. at Goa's Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee Indoor Stadium. Our correspondent reports that rehearsals are underway for the event that will celebrate India's rich culture with stunning performances. The opening ceremony will also highlight the journey of Indian cinema from the silent era to modern masterpieces. The final preparations are in full swing with last touches being added as IFI 2024 is set to begin in style this evening with a star-studded opening ceremony. The event will witness stunning performances including nostalgic 90s rewind and timeless souls a tribute to legends like Raj Kapoor and Mohammad Rafi through visuals, poetry and music. The ceremony will also take audiences through Indian cinema's journey from silent films to today's blockbusters. A galaxy of stars and filmmakers including Nagarjuna, Bomani Rani, Rajkumar Rao, Randeep Hudda, Subhash Ghai will be present in the ceremony. With over 180 films from 81 countries, the biggest ever film bazaar, master classes, competitions and vibrant events like Ifi Esta and the Carnival Parade, Ifi 2024 promises to be a grand celebration of cinema like never before. With Omve Shupadhyay, Durgesh Padoria, Akashwani News, Goa. This is Akashwani giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our X handle at AIR News Alerts. And for details of stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in and download the News on Air app. We now connect to our Maharashtra correspondent, Samarji Thakur. Let's go over live to our correspondent. Samarjit, how is the response of voters uh, for the elections? Yes, Punita. Polling is going on peacefully and smoothly across the state. Rural areas are seeing good voter turnout. Uh, this time, the administration has arranged shared shelters, drinking water and transport, and wheelchair facility for the young voters. Uh, temporary crutches for children have also been set up at many places. And also webcasting has been arranged over 50% of polling stations in each district. Uh, In uh, some district, uh, municipal school students and scout guide students are helping voters at the various polling stations. Punita. Rajit? 
Yes. Union Information and Broadcasting Minister Ashwini Vaishnav today said that India's creative economy has emerged as a $30 billion industry, contributing nearly 2.5% of GDP and providing livelihoods to 8% of the workforce. In an article in English and Hindi dailies, Mr. Vaishnav highlighted that this industry is a dynamic force with an influencer marketing sector valued at over 3,000 crore rupees and over 2 lakh full-time content creators. In the write-up, while talking about the 55th International Film Festival of India, which will begin in Goa this evening, the minister said that over the next eight days, the event will showcase hundreds of films, host masterclasses with industry stalwarts and honour the finest in global cinema. The Delhi government has decided to implement work from home for 50% of its employees amid poor quality quality of air in Delhi NCR. City Environment Minister Gopal Rai has convened a meeting this afternoon to implement this measure. The air quality in the Delhi NCR region continues to remain in the severe category with an average air quality index, AQI, of 430 at 1 this afternoon. According to the Central Pollution Control Board, some parts of the city have breached the 450 AQI levels. Delhi's Ashok Vihar station was recorded at 466, Anand Vihar at 459, Bhavana at 467, Jahangirpuri at 461, Mundka at 464, Rohini at 462 and Vazirpur at 466. The India Meteorological Department, IMD, has forecast very heavy rainfall, very likely over Tamil Nadu, Puducherry and Karaikal today. Further, heavy rainfall is also predicted over Lakshadweep, Kerala and Mahi today. IMD also said that light to moderate rainfall is expected in Andaman and Nicobar Islands during the week. The weather department has also predicted dense to very dense fog conditions in East Uttar Pradesh in the night and morning hours. IMD added that smog and moderate to dense fog is likely in the night and morning areas in Delhi and NCR regions during the next two to three days. India has called upon the developed countries to fulfill the agreed commitments relating to the adaptation finance needs of developing countries. In a statement of the high-level ministerial dialogue climate change adaptation during the COP29 to the UN Climate Change Summit, at Baku in Azerbaijan, India said, developing countries are suffering the impacts of climate change largely due to the historical emissions of developed countries. The statement read, developing countries are suffering the impacts of climate change largely due to the historical emissions of developed countries. The lives and livelihoods of people in the developing countries are at stake. We now go over to our another correspondent. Bhupendra Singh from Jharkhand. Bhupendra, what is the news in the elections? Yeah, Punita, the second and final phase of polling is progressing smoothly and peacefully in the Jharkhand. If you look at the voter turnout percentage till 1 p.m., 47.92% voting has been recorded in the 12 districts. Maximum 53.83% voting turnout has registered in Paco district, followed by Jamtara, 52.21%. The lowest turnout, 42.52%, uh, has been recorded in Bokaro. Uh, right now, I'm in uh, Ramgad constituency of Jharkhand. Here, 51.26% voter turnout has been recorded so far. And uh, people of all age groups are casting their votes. And polling officials and school students are providing every possible help and assistance to voters. Uh, several political political heavyweights also cast their votes. BJP state president Babulal Marandi cast his vote in Thank you. Danwar Thank you, Bupendra. Thank you, Bupendra. Thank you, Bupendra. In badminton, India's PV Sindhu and Malvika Bansor have stormed into the women's singles pre quarterfinals at the China Masters 2024 tournament in Shenzhen, China today. In table tennis, India's Priya Darshini Das will take on Shohan Mann of the Netherlands in the women's singles first round at the WTT feeder Dusseldorf in Germany this afternoon. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Over 32.18% voting recorded till 1 p.m. for single-phase assembly elections in Maharashtra. Peaceful polling underway in second phase of Jharkhand assembly elections. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi reaches Guyana to hold talks with President Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali at Georgetown this evening. Guyana announces to confer its highest national award, the Order of Excellence on Prime Minister Modi. And with that, we end the midday news.